to take you down memory lane. So obviously Chiefs play the uh, Raiders on Christmas Day, and I was doing some digging to see where our guy, J.D. Heaver, played on Christmas Day, and I found the best matchup. It was the, the pretty much the exact same matchup we're going to see on Monday against the Raiders, and I remember this game distinctly as, as a young buck. I, I believe I just turned 11 uh, when this game happened, J.D. <laughs> um, Chiefs won this one 31-30 in probably one of the, the craziest endings of a game. Uh, Raiders get the, a turnover on Trent Green. Uh, the defense holds, stops them. They kick a field goal. They go up, and then um, Dante, man, takes a return all the way across the 50, gets us in a field goal range, and boom, kick a field goal to win the game at the end with uh, Lawrence Tynes, uh, guest of the show, a friend of the show. J.D., talk to us about playing against the Raiders in Kansas City on Christmas Day. I mean, how – how great was that? That crowd. Just kind of talk us to uh, talk us about that about that game, the day and stuff. Oh man, uh, you know you have your family up, but you know you got to go do work. That's how it, just that's how it is. That's how it happens. Um, but you know, of course, you know, obviously at that time, um, playing the Raiders is a huge rivalry. Like I said, we we've talked about how how big of a rivalry it is in, in just the sports world in itself. Um, but you know, just being out there in front of everybody, you know, we were the, you know, the team for everybody to watch during Christmas, that was the game. And you know, everybody's going to be at the TVs at the house and, you know, kind of talking about, you know, what was going on. So, excuse me, we couldn't, we couldn't lose that game. I just remember, you know, you seeing Santa and of course in the crowd, you know, everybody wearing the Santa suits and and just kind of coming out and, and, uh, it's, I don't know, it, Every game didn't really – pretty much the same. You just – you take it all as tried. You really do as a player. You know, you, you don't look at, oh, this is, you know, a Christmas game or something. You, you just you just kind of go with the flow. But I, I know for a fact uh, that game in itself was, like you said, down to the wire. Uh, and the one that you see not – you showed on on, uh, on Twitter, me catching the football, was us moving the chains, you know, getting to the two-minute, four-minute offense – just getting the first down to move the ball. So we had to force them to actually call the timeouts. And that was kind of the thing to almost seal the deal because we spoke about it. Al was just talking about those things, how big of it was. And uh, I think he remember congratulating, like, like, you know, J.D. was a hell of a job making that catch because then it puts them in a predicament now that they got to call their timeouts in this, in this, you know, in, in the game. So it was good to got kind of get that pressure. Uh, I don't know in the in the in the catch, uh, you know, I look turn first because I'm just I'm reading everything that went on. I'm turning because the guy was I was hot. Guy, you know, he blitzed. So I turned. Hopefully, Trent was going to see me there, but Trent was looking back side. You know, I'm dissecting the video, uh, and then I just went ahead and got into the route. But then Trent, you know, kind of threw it there. Uh, I had to reach back to go get it. But I remember, you know, just us at that moment. That that's that was one of the things that we needed to just kind of just yeah, you get the chains moving. That's it. That's all we need to do. As long as we're moving the chains, don't put it as a predicament to get them the football back. Green. Wide open downfield is Jason Dunn. First down at the 40. Now Turner will have to use those timeouts. Well, that time the Raiders came with a blitz, but it was really poorly timed. They did not get anywhere near Trent Green. And Jason Dunn, who's not the go-to tight end, he's more or less the blocking tight end. So I'm trying to think who they had on their on this side. Was Kerry Collins playing for them? Yeah, Collins was their quarterback. On yeah, the side. Collins, Amos Zeraway was their running back, I believe, at that point in the season. Sap was a D tackle on the on their team at that point. Yeah, yeah. See, who was who a safety over top? Was that Derek Gibson? Stuart Schweiger? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's a long yeah. time ago. Shoot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny to, to, to remember all the like uh, being like a, a loyal fan to a team. Usually, you, you get to know so many other players from the other teams like throughout like that, those times watching them. Like you know, you met, like I, I like certain, certain fans don't remember who Stuart Schweiger is, but I remember him being a safety on, on that squad. Like I think that I think at the time, maybe too, they they signed Reggie Tongue around that, that around that period. It could have. I remember Reggie being on, the, but I, I don't know what years those were. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling y'all that that when you play for so long, your names come oh, and go, man. Together, yeah, yeah. There's so many guys that come and go. Like, now nah, was the same. Oh, what year? Okay, oh, they, oh, I got you. He's like, well, the next year I was somewhere else. So, 
Do, when we had a show, I throw like names out there. Do you ever like, like Stuart Schwager's a good example of like a guy like, oh man, I've heard that name in years. Like <laughs> years, years. Yeah. Somebody said a name the other day. I was just like, man, I ain't heard that name forever. Uh, but yeah, you you just kind of wonder like, dang, God, what's that guy been up to? You know, mm. you, you just you you notice there was somebody that you played against, and you know those things are always good to to reminisce about. Uh, but that yeah, man, playing at Arrowhead on, on Christmas because you always wonder like, who's gonna show up to this game? Everybody gonna be at home, and it, the stadium was filled to the gills, packed, packed with folks. Uh, so that's 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 you know it's always always fun to see great to see that but yeah man that night game is something else too night 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 games and arrowhead is a, is a whole different feel it really is than day games but but yeah man i know we got that victory we needed that victory can you imagine them coming in spoiling christmas because i know it's what they wanted to become they wanted yeah. to be the grinch they wanted to spoil christmas for us and it wasn't going to happen not in arrowhead it was not going to happen we won't happen you, you so you got to play uh, Thanksgiving a Thanksgiving game with the Giants. I remember that was one of the first NFL Network games. Um, like they played a Thursday night game. Um, yeah, uh, it was a, one of the first like non Lions or Cowboys games on on Thanksgiving. And you said like you don't really think about the the Christmas Day or Thanksgiving aspect. Was that was that different as far as like if you compare a Christmas Day game versus a Thanksgiving game? I mean, was there did you feel more the Thanksgiving vibe more so than the Christmas game? It was just more like another game. Oh, man. <laughs> not as I mean, not as much. Like I said, we come in. That's the thing about it. Like we're working, so you know where everybody gets into like the Christmas, you know, festivities, doing things with your family. Uh, you get like a, a small window for that, and then it's like, hey, I got to go to work. I got to leave out early in the morning. Can't even open the gifts, and you know, you're getting up late. You kiss everybody goodbye, and the kids, and and you go. So. Uh, I think you just get so focused on what you have to do as far as playing that you don't really get into the, like I said, the whole the holiday spirit of things as much, right? It's around, but you're going, it's business as usual. It's what you get paid for. So, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of laser focused because you, you got it. You got a responsibility. You got to be somewhere. It's almost like how, when people work on Christmas or, or Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Like they, they focus on the job. It's what they focus on. So, yeah, we just know that sometimes the audience is going to be different. We know because you you you're going to be the game of the day or the week. They you know that. So that that's the only different vibe because you know it's going to be a lot of people out there watching. You know from their respective uh, homes. So, yeah, and and the, and the guys play one o'clock on on Christmas Day. So I mean, at one o'clock you you go home with a win around three three thirty four, and you can go home and enjoy the Christmas night at least. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you miss, you miss the presents opening for if you have kids, you miss, you miss that aspect in the morning unless you're you can stay home, stay there a little bit. Yeah, and, and and you know kids could tell you what they got, and you know when you're having your family in, uh, you know having a Christmas dinner. Uh, but here's the thing, and this is why it's so it's so uh, when you when you're thinking about playing, if you lose a game like that, it's almost like you can't even enjoy. You know the festivities because you lost. You know what I mean? That's that's how much I mean, that's how much it means to us. And, and I know it's hard to bring take bring don't bring things home with you, but sometimes that guy it just you just can't help it. You can't because if you let one go, I'm not saying the Chiefs going to do that. I mean it's just any team that they feel that somebody's going to lose. Put it that way, right? Yeah. Somebody's going to lose, and it it kind of sucks because now. You're thinking about the, you know, the team that, you know, has to travel and where they're going to be calling the kids, staying in hotel rooms. That that's that's what you kind of give up. But that's the job, man. That's the job. Job, yeah. Yeah, I remember when um, first year when I was working in news, and like that's that's one of the jobs where like you know like like a professional athlete like if you're scheduled to work that day, you got to work the day. It doesn't it doesn't shut down. TV never uh, shuts off, mm -hmm. and I remember first off, it was impossible to get a story that day because you wanted to get a story about any kind of a, a public official. They're 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 off that day. Uh, you, your your state senator, your local uh, representative, he, he's off that day. So good luck getting in touch with him. 
So you have to find these like stories, like you know, I remember around Thanksgiving, like okay, Black Friday shopping, people are just lined up around the around the street corner, and you know, what what you know, what are you getting? Like, what, what kind of deals are you looking for? So there's stories like that. Yeah, they're like fluffy stories, but that's the best you're gonna do on a day like that. Other uh, unless there's like a you know like an accident or like you know a house fire or something. But like yeah, it's it's tough. I mean yeah, it's it, it's 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 part of the job. Like, you don't really when I think about it, it's like, oh man, it's Thanksgiving, you know, my whole family's at home, but like, I gotta be out here, you know, reporting yeah. and stuff. So, so, so this is, it's, you know, let them go ahead and get the win so they can celebrate everything with the family. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, and it's just going to make the holiday cheers even better. So, uh, you know, have you some, some, some turkey, some good food, good family, you know, all the, the Yuletide cheer and the blessings that, that you deserve and get that with the win on top of it. Yes, just makes it just make it even better, right? Yeah. You're tired, you know, the, the libations start to flow, everybody gets into it. You know, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. yeah. So, and nothing better than making your uh your division rival pod go home uh pissed off after a while. Yeah, man. <laughs> you don't want no bar humbugs, you know what I mean? You don't want no. that around there. That's no, you the got, last thing you want. Gotta be there, Scrooge, this year. Um hi everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.